So me and my wife moved to uh, Germany a few years ago and uh, yeah, we still don't really understand how this country works. We don't speak the language and uh, of course, um, you know, we are very curious, we want to learn. So I've read a book that I actually liked. Uh, it's called Why Germans Do It Better? Um, Notes from a Grown-Up Country. So it's a book by John Kampfner. I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, he is, I think, half British and half um, German. So I think he knows what he's talking about. Let's see. Let's check his Wikipedia. So basically, he has, you know, uh, German um, heritage, I would say. And he also lived and worked in Germany um, at different moments of his life. So I think he's a pretty well-known person, both in the UK and a little bit in Germany as well, so much so that the book became quite famous in both countries. The book starts um, with uh, the pandemic and it compares the UK and Germany. It explains how in the UK things went horribly wrong, uh, especially at the beginning, and uh, how in uh, Germany things went much better and how surprised were the Brits about this. Uh, what uh, John Kampfner is saying is the reason I believe why this happened is because of their culture. In the UK it's all about, you know, um, the glorious past and politics and politicians are all about making bold statements and particularly Boris Johnson is about that and um, that doesn't work when you face a pandemic. While in Germany, politics are more about being very rational, taking a hard look at yourself, um, seeing all the different options that you have. Of course, he talks about Mutti, right? Uh, um, Merkel. And uh, she is, uh, I think, um, a PhD in biology. Yeah, she is well known in the country for being very rational, for having created this kind of climate of stability. And um, she even uh, was known for, again, uh, thinking a bit too much about all the possible options, so much so that the Germans created a term that is called too Merkel about something, meaning to be indecisive and to think back about like, what should I do this or should I do that? Well, my friends, that turns out to be a very rational way of approaching things that you don't know a lot about, like a pandemic. So, um, you know, when you compare this kind of boastful style of uh, British politics versus this more like, you know, rational, indecisive, uh, sort of like, you know, very analytical style of Merkel and maybe German politics in general, uh, well, you can see how one might work better compared to the other uh, when you're facing such a crisis. The point that um, John makes is that because of the not so glorious old past of Germany, of course, Nazi Germany, World War II and so on, Germans don't have this kind of old good old days to look back on and to kind of, you know, distract themselves with, uh, but they focus a lot on the present, they focus a lot on uh, improving themselves, they take a hard look, they're very critical. And so this, again, is the reason why they were able to survive. Again, they lost two world wars. Uh, they survived basically the Russian dictatorship and occupation. Uh, they reabsorbed, uh, uh, let's say, a poorer country, so uh, um, East Germany. And, no, you know, <clears throat> despite all of this, they were actually able to become um, one of the biggest and most, uh, let's say, prosperous country in the world with a very strong economy, at least for, for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, not so much now, we're facing, you know, issues. Um, but because of this, basically, because of this approach, they were able to, to pull through. Something I didn't know that, again, John Kampfner uh, writes in the book is that you know, Germans were always feeling very guilty about the war and they also felt very guilty about the fact that a lot of Nazi Germans that were involved with the regime actually had a pretty important role even after the war to rebuild the country, which kind of makes sense, but it's shocking at the same time, I didn't know. It seems like in many of the occasions um, these people were kind of rehabilitated, even if they had col collaborated with the Nazi party 
um, they were kind of yeah given kind of like a you know a redemption card that you literally actually you could get this kind of stamp that you were like absolved from your past and you could now take charge and uh, meaning like you could take a, 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 a public uh, role and help rebuild Germany. So for me, this was quite shocking. And I think, you know, for the Germans themselves, it was quite shocking to see that the same people before and after the war were, were still in power. And they were very, um, yeah, they were very, they were, they were feeling guilty about that. And there is this kind of, of term called uh, coming to term with history, um, which come to terms with history, or with the past in German which is called oh my god it's unpronounceable Vergangenheitsbewältigung oh my god Vergangenheitsbewältigung 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 oh my god anyway this is like coping with the past yeah I'm sure that uh, it must have been awful and the book says you know people didn't want to talk about it and the grandparents didn't want to talk about it and and, and the parents were not so happy to, to talk about it. And the kids, there was this kind of a movement in the 60s that they just wanted to, to set the record straight. They wanted to, again, come into term with the past and uh, they wanted to talk about these issues. So, you know, you have the war, you have the Russians, you have all these troubles and you still get to be the fourth largest uh, economy in the world that's not you know that's not something that anybody could pull could, could pull off yeah there's a few other things that the books talk about like this very you know important figure of angela merkel which again has uh, so much influenced germany uh, in the last 20 years or 30 years and um, yeah there are so many nice well nice so many interesting episodes for instance this interview which i remember when Merkel was asked, uh, when you think about Germany, when you close your eyes and think about Germany, what comes to mind? The answer she gives is really strange. She says, I think about airtight windows. Uh, so yeah, probably, again, you can see the style here is not about boasting about the past or, you know, the beauty and the culture and whatever. But she's thinking about, you know, these airtight windows that are very well built and only the Germans can do them so well that, you know, don't let the uh, heat out, and don't let the wind in, and whatever. Merkel thinks about airtight windows and that's just how it is. Okay, then um, the last thing I wanted to say is uh, the environment, very important. The Germans had one of the first um, green parties in, in the world, basically. They do, they take very seriously their, their recycling. Um, they love their rules, they love their petty rules. So I will say um, recycling is probably one of those things that the Germans are, you know, built to excel at. Um, and um, yeah, they also love their cars, which is kind of a contradiction. Uh, so yeah, they love their cars, they also love the environment, and the two things kind of go together. Uh, now Tesla is opening this huge factory uh, just here outside of Berlin, so probably... Yeah, probably the two things will kind of reconcile at some point. I love the book. We had a lot of fun with my wife uh, uh, looking at uh, all these kind of episodes about German history online. Um, and uh, maybe we understand a little bit better why Germans are so special. Um, and uh, yeah, people might feel like they don't fall into the stereotype of like a German person or a British person or whatever. And that's all good. But I think, you know, the book point is kind of like trying to explain why uh, things are a certain way and also talking about yeah the fact that focusing on your mistakes and focusing on what you need to improve is in general probably better than focusing on your you know achievements and focusing on your glorious past um, for a person and for a country so yeah i agree with that even though again there's a lot of things that are related to politics here and so uh, they might create uh, disagreement or there might be different opinions about it but the overall assumption i think is solid and it's uh, it's a good one 
uh, thanks for watching the video I don't know maybe you're watching maybe not it was uh, just my one of my first videos so who cares but uh, thank you very much bye bye